This is part 21 of ADO.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement transactions in ADO.NET. First, let's understand what is a transaction. A transaction ensures that either all of the database operations succeed or all of them fail. This means the job is never half done. Either all of it is done or nothing is done. Let's understand this with an example. We'll be using this accounts table in this demo. We have two account numbers, two customers, and each customer has got 100 as the balance. Now we want to design a web form which is going to display the customer account numbers, their names, and the balance. And when we click this button, we want to transfer $10 from account A1 to account A2. For this to happen, we should have two update statements happening behind the scenes. The first update statement should deduct $10 from account A1 and the second update statement should add that $10 to account A2. So for this transaction to be successful, both of the update statements should be executed successfully. Now what do you think is going to happen if the first update statement executes successfully and when the second update statement is about to be executed, let's say we have got a problem and as a result it didn't execute successfully. Now if you look at the state of our transaction, it's half done. Right? We directed $10 from account A1, but we didn't successfully credit that to account A2. Now, when we add the balances of both the accounts, it should be 200, but in this case, it's going to be 190. So, where is that $10 gone? We don't have an answer. So, the data integrity is lost there. But transactions will ensure that either both the update statements in this case are going to succeed or if one of them fails, what the transaction will do is roll back the changes done by the first update statement so that the data integrity is maintained. So let's see how to implement transactions in ADO.NET. So the first step here is to create this table, which I have already done. So here is the SQL script to create the table and this is the data that we have at the moment. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have a new empty ASP.NET web application project. All I have done so far is included the connection string to the database within web.config file and then I have also designed the web form. So here we have an HTML table where we are displaying account number, customer name and balance and there are labels um, to display you know, that information. And we have a button here and a label to display whether the transaction you know, is completed successfully or if it has failed. So let's double click on the button control to generate the click event handler and let's bring in the ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.data, system.data.sql client and system.configuration. And the first thing that we need to do is write code to retrieve data from the accounts table. So what I'm going to do here is actually write a private function. So private void, let's call this get data. And here the first thing that we need to do is read the connection string from web.config file. So we are going to make use of configuration manager class and the connection string name is CS dot connection string. So that should give us the connection string. The next step is to actually create the SQL connection object. and let's pass the connection string that we have read from web.config file. Let's create our SQL command object and what we want to do is retrieve all the data that we have within accounts table. So select star from accounts table and we want to use the connection object that we have created to execute this command. So let's go ahead and open the connection and let's create a SQL data reader object and then execute our command using execute reader method. And then let's use a while loop and then loop through the results that we get. Okay, so what is this command going to do? At the moment we have just two rows in the database table so it's going to return us the two rows. So let's use a check here. So if RDR so what are the column names? We have got account number, customer name, and balance. Those are the column names. So if RDR of account number dot two string, if that is equal to A1,
then what we want to do is in the first set of label controls here we want to display a1 information so lbl account number one dot text equals a1 and similarly lbl balance one dot text equals rdr of what is the column name balance so let's display that in that label and finally lbl name one dot text equals RDR of the name of the column here is customer name. So let's copy that. And let's convert that to string. All right. So if, if the account number is not equal to A1, then we know that we have to populate the information for the second account number. So we have LBL account number 2 and LBL balance 2 and LBL name to. Alright, so pretty straightforward method here. So let's use this get data method and call that within the page load event. So if not is post back, then we want to call this function. So this is going to load up the data. So let's quickly run this and make sure you know it loads data. So now when we click this button that's when we want to transfer ten dollars from A1 to a2 actually we need to change this to a2 because if it's not a1 then the account number is going to be a2 so let's run this one more time just to make sure you know it displays account number as a2 all right now let's write code to transfer ten dollars from a1 to a2 so to speed things up what I'm gonna do is actually copy this piece of code and then within the button click event, we are going to paste that. Okay, so we are reading the connection string from web.config file. We are creating a connection object. Here, we are going to include our update statement. So when we click this button, what should happen first? We should deduct $10 from account A1. Uh, you know, that's the first update statement. And here is the SQL update accounts set balance equals balance minus 10 where account number is equal to a1 so that's going to be our SQL command so SQL command equals that and we are going to use this connection object right and we are opening the connection and this is an update statement so we are going to simply say execute non query let's actually make this part of try block okay and let's have a catch block if there is an exception you know it's going to reach into this catch block all right now once this command is executed we want to have another update command so what I'm gonna do is actually copy these lines here and paste them there since we have already opened the connection we don't have to do that again so here our second update command is going to be this one so we want to add ten dollars to account A2 so let's copy that update statement and specify that right here all right now if both of the statements execute then we have a label control um, you know on the web form and the ID of the label is LBL message so within that label control we want to say the transaction is successful so LBL message dot text equals let's say transaction successful and let's also set you know if full color to that one to green so system dot drawing dot color dot green okay now on the other hand if there is any problem executing this code then we know something has gone wrong in which case we want to say transaction failed maybe and then maybe let's set the color to red all right so with these changes now this is adio.net code we are not using transactions yet so let's go ahead and run this now 
So we have the data. Now let's go ahead and transfer $10. Now transaction successful. It doesn't update the data here because we didn't call that method. So let's actually reload. Look at that. You know, $10 is successfully transferred to account A2. Now let's do one thing. After all this go through, you know, we want to kind of call get data method so that the data gets reloaded into the page. And let's introduce you know an error condition here let's misspell the table name update accounts one we don't have such a table so this update statement is going to execute successfully but then when it's about to execute this update statement there will be an exception at runtime okay and at that point let's see what's going to happen so if you look at the state of the data at the moment you know We've got $90 within A1 and $100 within account A2, but the total sum is $200. Now let's rerun this page, and then let's click this button. Look at that. It says transaction failed, but it managed to detect $10 from account A1, but it didn't add that $10 to account A2. Okay, so if we add these together, 110 plus 80, it's 190. Where did that $10 go? Now, this ADO.NET code that we have written now, it's not part of a transaction. That's why the job is half done here. One update statement is executed successfully, but not the other update statement. Now, anytime we click this button, we want both of these update commands to be part of a single transaction. Either both of them should succeed, or if one of them fails, you know, we want to undo the changes done by the first update statement so that the data integrity is not lost. So how do we make these commands part of transaction? That's when we use SQL transaction object. So the first thing that we need to do is create a SQL transaction object. SQL transaction, let's call this transaction equals. Now, how do we create SQL transaction object? Now, we use the begin transaction method of the connection object. And if you look at the IntelliSense, notice that this method actually returns a SQL transaction object. So we use begin transaction method to create an instance of uh, transaction object. Now, what we want to do with this transaction object, we want to make these two commands, that is, the first SQL command and the second SQL command, both of them part of this transaction. Let's actually move this line to top here. Okay, so we want to make this command part of this transaction, and to do that, if you look at the overloaded versions of this SQL command constructor, there is another overloaded version where we can specify the transaction, right? So here we have got the transaction object. We are going to pass that as a third parameter here. So now this command is tied with this transaction. Along the same lines, we want to make this command also part of that transaction. And for that, we are going to pass the same transaction object as an argument to the second command as well. Okay, now both of these commands, command one and command two, both of them are part of the same transaction. Now, you know, if the code reaches here, then we know the transaction has been completed successfully in the sense both of the update statements have executed successfully, in which case we want to commit the transaction. So we want to make the changes permanent. That's when we call the commit method. Okay, now when we are executing this piece of code, if there at all, if there is any problem, then it's going to go into this catch block. So that's when we want to roll back the transaction. So transaction Okay, uh, we have to define this object, you know, outside the try block because if we want that to be available in the, in the catch block, then we have to do that. So let's take this and define it right there. Actually, let's move this connection object also onto the top. So we open the connection and we begin the transaction there. All right, so if there are any problems, then we roll back the transaction. All right, so with all these changes, let's go ahead and run this 
piece of code. Uh, but before that, let's actually undo this change right here. So update accounts, you know, let's look at the happy conditions first. So everything should work now. So at the moment, the balance is 190, right? So let's go ahead and transfer $10 from A1 to A2. Look at that, uh, 70 plus 120, it is, you know, the balance is uh, 190, which is as expected, transaction successful. Now let's introduce an error. So let's say update accounts one, and let's rerun this. Now let's click this button. Look at that, it says transaction failed, but you know it didn't deduct $10 as well. So it executed the update statement, and then when it tried to execute the second update statement, there was a problem. So when there is a problem, what's going to happen? It's going to go to that catch block, right? And then within the catch block, we are rolling back the transaction. So this is going to undo the changes done by the first update statement. That's how we are maintaining the integrity of data here. Thank you for listening and have a great day.